Heather? I I'm all right. You sure? Yeah, yeah, I just have to catch my breath. Would you like a glass of water? No, it, it's all right. Uh, go back to whatever you were doing. I'm sorry. Hello, Jesse. I am checking in. Well, Monica, welcome back. Thank welcome you. Welcome back indeed. I wasn't expecting you back for at least another day. Well, I got a little restless and decided to drive back early and check on my patients before dinner. Oh, I'll get your messages and uh, so forth. You've got a box full. Oh, by the way, we moved Dan to another ICU on 110. Why? Oh, there was a problem with the monitoring system, but fortunately, no problem with the move. Good. Excuse me. You're staring. I'm marveling. You know, every time you go away, you come back more breathtaking than before. Well, I accept that as a compliment. Thank you very much. So you should. You think it would do me any good at all to try and talk you into having dinner with me? I think you could certainly try. How about 4.45 at the rib? Can I pick the one? You got a deal. I'll see you there in an hour. I look forward to it. I'll see you. There you are. My, this has turned out to be quite a day. Two compliments in two hours. <laughs> oh, really? Who gave you the first one? A man by the name of Basil Corso. Corso, one of the oil brothers? Mm -hmm. A healthy one, I see. Handsome one. Yeah, well, mysterious in some ways. Listen, Jesse, if anybody wants to get in touch with me, I'll be on six, okay? All right. Thank you. Jesse, thank you. Oh. Hi, Hi, Dan. Hi. Hi, Donna. Hi, how is Dan? Well, uh, he's still not out of the woods yet. We're watching him very closely. Well, listen, I would like to see him tomorrow. Fine, fine. I'd appreciate your opinion. Oh, thank you. You. Yeah. Uh, excuse me just a second. Sure. Uh, Jesse, pardon me. Uh, when did Alan check out to uh, go for dinner? Uh, about 20 minutes ago. He said he'd meet you at the rib. Oh, fine. Oh, uh, Monica, um, we're heading that way. You want to walk with us? Oh, thank you. Yeah, better still, why don't you join us? Oh, wow. Well. How's that sound? Oh. Rose, I'm sorry. I'm inviting half the hospital to dinner, and I didn't even check with you yet. I'm sorry. Oh, it's fine with me. The more the merrier. Well, um, thank you very much. I think Alan will be first. Please. Wonderful, uh... wonderful. We'll see you there, then. All right, fine. Thank Jessie, you. Jesse, good night. Don't work too hard. I won't. Thank you. <laughs> good night. Right. This is really something, Jesse. Oh, yes. Which article are you reading? I understand there are several floating around. Well, I'm reading the one about Luke, uh, being... Well, he seems to have, have been there when they discovered him. I mean, they, of course, those, they're virtual strangers. They were the ones who discovered him. I understand that uh, Charles Corso is a patient of Mark's. Yes, and, and it says that uh, Basil Corso was also involved. I believe he was the one who spotted Luke first. And Luke ran. I mean, I thought it was all just talk, but... Well, from the looks of things, uh, Luke really did stab Dan. Unfortunately, a lot of people are coming to that conclusion. Hi. Mother? Oh, don't get up. Can I join you? Actually, I have a guest arriving. Well, I'll just be a second. I just wanted to show you some things I got for Jason today. What? It's not his birthday already, is it? No, it's no special occasion. I've just been doing a lot of thinking about Stephen Lars and... Uh, I guess it got to me. Anyway, I got him these. <laughs> He's a little bit young to be playing baseball, don't you think? Oh, that's never too young to get started with this. <laughs> Besides, I got him something to hold him over. Oh, that's absolutely adorable. I love that. Yeah, it's got the softest fur in the world. Feel it. Yeah, I don't really think that's necessary. Take your word for it. But come on, Alan. I promise you, he doesn't bite. It's very, very soft indeed. See, what did I tell you? <laughs> And he even barks. Really? The dog barks? No kidding. <laughs> you ready? You want to see him? Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. I'll let him see him. <laughs> <laughs> now, don't laugh at him. You know, because if you laugh at this dog, you'll hurt its feelings. He'll get over it, Heather. No, he won't. No. No, he's got a big frown on his face. I think you better give him a kiss and make him feel better. You want me to kiss the dog? Sure, Alan. Anything to cheer him up. 
Yes. Heather, I don't really think that... Go ahead, me. Alan. You kiss the dog. Come on, it'll remind you of all your days with Susan. Oh, Monica, I didn't see you come in. Apparently not. I was just showing Alan some of the gifts I bought for Jason Moore. Perhaps I should wait at the bar. Oh, no, no. Please sit down. I was just leaving. It was very nice to see you, Alan. And you, Heather, thank you very much for your consideration about the gifts for Jason. Well, I enjoyed doing it. I hope to see you again soon. Nice running into you, Monica. I'm sure. Shame. I was so hoping we could have an uneventful dinner. Now, will you stop that? Heather approached me. And stop looking at my hand as well. She approached me, and I wasn't going to turn her away. Look, it's she fine. was just about. Fine. Of course, it's fine. After all, she's a blood relative. Look, Monica, it is not going to turn into one of those kind of evenings. <clears throat> is there a reason why Rose Kelly is waving at me, Monica? Well, yes. She and Marvin are joining us for dinner. Thank you so much for asking me. I really do appreciate the consideration. You were too busy kissing dogs. Hi. Hi. Not too late. Hello, Mark. Well, good to see you. Good to see you. Hi. Got some wine here. Any objections to that? Oh, Riffix. Fine with me. What about you, Rose? Oh, it sounds wonderful. <clears throat> Rough day? Oh, normal. Normal as can be. Four procedures this morning. Two emergencies. It's a wonder I made it at all. <laughs> what about the Rappaport case? How the surgery? Fine. No foreseeable complications. That is a tricky procedure. Yeah, particularly on a woman that age. About Dan, any change? Not yet. We're still playing it by ear. Um, uh, Jesse told me that you have a patient, a Charles Corso. Uh, yeah. He's been in my care for about, uh... It's three weeks now. He's the one that spotted Luke for the first time in the, in the hospital, wasn't uh -huh. he? We were in the corridor on the second floor. Yeah, and then I read in the papers that uh, Luke ran when he was spotted or something? Yeah, Basil spotted him, ran after him, Luke decked him. Then he and the girl disappeared downstairs. Well, things don't seem to be going very well for Luke. No, that's for sure, except uh, I did talk to his friend Scorpio. He thinks without a doubt Luke's innocent. Be that as it may. I mean, rumor has it the only reason Luke was in the hospital in the first place was to try to finish Dan off. That's yeah, not true. Well, do you know something we don't? Look, I know Luke. And people who write for the media don't know anything about him. The things they say, just none of it's true. My father is an eyewitness. Then your father's lying. I beg your pardon? Can you prove that? I don't have to. I know Luke too well, and he never hurt Dan. Rose, according to the Corsos, Luke was involved in something that was highly illegal, and that could make anyone desperate. Not Luke. Look. You really don't know Rose, him, none of you. Not You're not. saying Luke is guilty, and I'm not going to stay here and listen Rose, to him. Good night. Rose, no. Wait a minute, no. What? I'll see you later.